There are quite some ways to make an AI take a decision between various options. Let me show you a simple yet a powerful one. The system is called Utility AI. Let's see what it's all about. Let's say we have two options to choose from, A and B. How can an AI decide which is better? Well, Utility AI handles this problem by assigning a way, also called a score or utility, to each option and picking the better one. Better usually means having the higher way. But how is the score calculated? In the simplest case, it's computed by assigning weights to all factors which are relevant for given options and combining them together. Those factors are called considerations. The best way to visualize this is by a concrete example. Let's say we have two enemies fighting each other in turns. Each one can attack the other, heal himself or run away. They also have a limited amount of health and healing potions. Therefore we have three options to consider and we can try to assign considerations to each one. So here we have a skeleton of our AI written in Rust. Let me zoom in a bit. We have our player which has a health, some healing potions. As you can see health is one, healing potions is some arbitrary number. And we have three actions a given player can take at each turn. Let's look at the attack option. The lower the enemy health, the closer the player is to winning, so we can say the attack option should consider enemy health. Own health and the amount of healing potions are somewhat irrelevant, so we need not to consider them at all. Therefore, we create a consideration which returns the enemy health. Let's create a module considerations and inside let's create a function which simply returns the player health. Here it is, health weight returns a score which is simply a player health. Let's import the player here and that's it. That's our consideration which takes into account player health and nothing more. The next step should involve mapping this value to an actual usable wave. In simple systems this is already built in the consideration itself but it's not generic enough for well, a general case. So we'll use something called a mapping curve. This is essentially a function which takes a number from a consideration and outputs a wave based on some mathematical equation. Why is that necessary? Well, it's usually quite important to have weights or scores normalized in some well-defined range, for example from 0 to 1, while considerations might return some arbitrary numbers in the general case. So what kind of a mapping curve would be great for our player health consideration when we wish to attack one? In this case we can use a simple descending linear function with some minimum value. So in the end our attack option would be based on a simple linear curve based on enemy health consideration. So let's create a module named a curve. Instead, let's create a function which simply takes a value and returns 1 minus the actual value with some lower bound. So how is that actually used? Well, it's used by things called reasoners, which uh, take weights for each available option and choose the best one. For now, let's create a module called a reasoner. And inside, let's simply create a function which computes wave for an attack. Like we said before, this will only be based on player health consideration, which uses the bounded linear curve. Here we go. This function returns the attack wave for a given player, it simply uses the curve and our consideration, and also some debug info. All right, let's move on to the next option. The healing option, it's much more interesting. We should consider both own health and the number of healing potions available. So we create two considerations returning these values and we need to use proper curve mapping for both of them. We already have a health consideration, so now we need a healing potions consideration. 
And here we go. Let's import the constant. Our healing potions consideration will simply return how much healing potions we have left relative to the maximum number. And we need to use proper mapping curves for both of them. The lower our health, the higher the need for healing. In fact, the need gets rapidly higher at some point while it's not that high when the health, well, it's high itself. So let's assume the best curve in this case is something like this. So let's create a curve exactly for this case. Let's call it simply inverse and we will pass our values right inside. The case with healing potions is a bit simpler. We return one if we have potions or zero otherwise. So again, let's create another curve. Let's call it above zero. If our value is greater than zero, one else, zero, simple. The last step involves combining those two waves to produce a single one to compare with other options. This can be done by something we can call an evaluator or a combiner. Since we cannot do any healing without healing potions, we can simply multiply the health with healing potions. Of course, mapped by the curves. Note, each option should have the same weight value range for proper comparison. In our case, everything is contained between zero and one. So let's create a module name evaluator and a simple multiplication one. So here we have an evaluator, which takes some iterator, taking floats and simply multiplies them together. So now let's create a similar functions to our attack one, which combines all of this and creates a wave for healing. So we call it heal wave for a given player. And inside first, we compute the health wave using our inverse curve, our health consideration, and for now our hard-coded factors. Of course, all of this should be data-driven in a real applications, but here, let's just simply keep everything hard-coded. Our second input wave would be the health potion one. So we use our above zero curve and our healing potions wave to create the resulting healing potion wave. Both of them should be combined using the above evaluator. So our final result is a multiplication of both ways. Beautiful. Now let's simply print some debug info and return the result. Here we go. So we have one option left, running away. Well, running away is similar to healing, but with one exception. We should not run away if we have healing potions. So we simply invert its mapping curve. So first let's create a curve called equal zero, which will simply compare the value to zero and return one or return zero. Let's ignore the strict comparison here, okay? And of course, let's create our final runaway wave function, which will compute the wave for running away for a given player, which looks similar to heal wave with one exception. We swap the above zero curve with the equal zero curve. So now we see how useful it is to separate actual considerations from mapping curves. We use the same consideration in both cases, but we simply map the values in a different way. And of course, some debug info and returning the result. So what's left to do is create a function which would take these three weights and choose the best one. So we create a choose action function, which computes weights for each action, iterates, finds the one with the maximum wave. We use partial compulsion because it's float, we can safely unwrap the res result, which we really shouldn't do in a real production code, but for this demo, let's do it anyway. And we simply take our best option and return it. Okay, so we now have a fully functional utility AI reasoner, which can decide what action to take based on some mathematical equations. Let's see how it works in practice. In our main function, we already have a random number generator. Let's add two players and let's create our game loop. Inside first, let's print some debug info, which will tell us what the current state is. Then let's choose an action for the first player against the second one. Once we have the action, we can simply create a match and execute it. So for an attack action, we simply do some random damage. If the enemy is dead, we win. For healing action, we decrease the healing potion count and we heal ourselves some random amount. And for running away, we simply will run away. We can repeat the exact same thing for the second player. Here we go. Second player debug info, second player action, and the actual actions our second player can take. So let's run it and see what happens. Okay, after some compilation time, we have the results. Take a look. We are starting with our default numbers. 
we see what are the weights for particular actions. And the best one is attack since it has the maximum wave. So player action, attack. Second player action, again, computing weights. Notice these two are bigger because we dealt some damage, but still the attack wins. Another turn, again, attack wins. Another turn, again, the attack wins. And on, and on, and on. And actually, only attacks were taken. That's because we have our random number generator, so if we run it again, we'll probably have some healing done, or maybe even running away. And here we go. We finally see some healing action being done. We see the attack action is really favored in most of the situations, so if we want, we can tweak our mapping curves to favor one action or another. We can also add some kind of cooldown for each action, so it will receive a negative bonus if it was taken recently, or we can simply leave it as is. So now let's summarize. In the very end, each option has a wave in the range from 0 to 1, so we can choose the best one, as you can see. The choice is made by an entity we call the reasoner, which is here, and our reasoner will simply pick the highest wave out of those three provided. This is the whole theory about utility AI. Of course, there are more advanced versions when we can group options into categories and choose the most important category. We can add some cooldowns, some additional considerations, etc. But this simple one is good enough. We can also implement some, for example, inertia or more dynamic weights. But the essence is quite simple. Each option has a wave coming from a combined waves based on relevant considerations and the one with the best wave simply wins. Okay, I hope you found this informative. Hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions, post them down below. Click subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.